Hi, I posted this video on my YouTube channel uh, recently and somebody left me a comment to say that they'd been trying to work out how to bend the grass border that's in Scan and Cut Canvas in the same way as I'm showing here on this card. So I went to Canvas and had a look and the border that I think the lady is talking about is this one here. And as you can see, the grass all bends, but the border itself is straight. And I think she wanted to try and make it a bit more in line with a die that she'd seen. Now, there's no easy way to do that in Canvas, really. So I think the easiest way is if I show you how to do it in Inkscape and then see if this helps. So I'm going to just get rid of that. And I'm in Inkscape. I'm in, in a new blank page. You may have another way of doing this, but this is just a way that I thought of that you'd be able to do it. So the first thing I'm going to do is come over here to the Bezier tool and I'm going to select that and you can see that I've got the kind of like pen nib on the end of my mouse. I'm going to left click once here, drag a line up and then come down and just double click to anchor it. Then I'm just going to hit the selection icon to select it and then I'm going to come over to the node editing icon and I'm just going to click in the middle here somewhere and drag this line out so it bends. Click on this line and drag this line over so it bends as well and then when I click off you'll see how that's looking. So from there with that selected I'm going to go to edit down to clone, create tiled clone and this box will open. You want symmetry P1 simple translation and then I want them all in a line so in rows and columns I'm going to put one and then I'm just going to use eight. You could use more, it's entirely up to you. In fact I'll make it ten and then I'm going to hit create and that's given me clones. Now before you do anything you've got to delete this one that's selected because this is the clone. So you just hit delete on the keyboard and then I'm going to close this down now. So now I'm just going to select the zoom arrow and I'm just going to zoom in on these and they're all individual and what I'm going to do I'm just going to drag them down and overlap them slightly. Then this one I'm going to flip and I'll bring it down a bit in height and I'll drag that one over. I don't want them to necessarily overlap here but I want them to overlap here at the bottom and then I'm just going to keep dragging them along and shrinking them down. You can Click them and rotate them if you want, you know, make them different angles. As I say, this is just a kind of process that I worked through to try and see if I could make this work. You may have, you know, an alternative method, as I say. I'm going to flip this one horizontally again. I might shrink it down a bit more. In fact, I might take this one lower. And I'm just going to work my way along trying to keep the bottom as levelish as possible. It's not vital, you can always manipulate it again. I'm going to flip this one. So I'm kind of flipping some, leaving some as they are. This one I think I'm going to take down. So that's how they're looking now. So I'm just going to left click anywhere on the page to deselect. I'm going to drag an imaginary box around them all to select them. And I'm going to go to Path, Union, and that should weld them. Now, you can see that it's quite small. I've got this set in inches, so it's 2.73 wide and it's 1.9 inches high. Again, you can resize all this at the end. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to zoom in again so you can see. And we're now going to come to Path, Path Effects. That will bring this box up, the Path Effects box. I'm going to click on the plus 
and it should bring this other box up and you want the top one which is bend selected with that selected you click add now from here I'll just try and move this over a little bit to get it more in the middle of the page. From here now, you want to select this icon next to Bend Path. Make sure your width is 1.0000 and hit Bend and it will give you this line in the middle. Now, you just need to take your time with this. Don't try and bend it too much because it will skew it all out of line and it'll look a mess. So I'm just going to click somewhere in the middle of this green line and I'm just going to start to drag it up a little bit. And as it is now, I'm just going to left click out here somewhere and drag an imaginary box around that green line which will select both these nodes for me. It's turned them blue. Then I'm going to come up here and click insert a node and that's put me a node in the middle. So what I should now be able to do is use the arrows on this middle node to drag it down slightly and just manipulate it a little bit more and then use the up, arrow, the up drag handle on this one and bring this one down to just try and get it a little bit more of a bend. As I say, it's quite subtle, but you know, you can just play around with it and see how you go. Once I'm thinking that that, you know, is kind of maybe okay, I'm just going to hit the select icon. And you can see it's got a slight curve on it. I can close this down now and then zoom back to the mat. So that's kind of given me a basic shape with a ever so slightly bend. I mean, as I say, it's not going to be perfect, but what we're going to do, we're going to create a duplicate. So we're going to select it and click duplicate, or you can do control key on your, on your keyboard. I'm going to position this one so it overlaps here. Select both and go path union. And that's now welded those together. So I'm just, again, I'm just going to drag in so you can see it a bit more. And I'm going to try the same thing. So I'm going to come to Path, Path Effects, click on the plus icon, choose Bend and say Add. And then again, I'm going to select the Bend icon to get this line. I'll just close that down so you can see the line. And again, I'm just going to start to manipulate it. I'm going to drag an imaginary box around the two nodes and I'll add two more nodes in and see if we can manipulate this line anymore by using the drag ha handles. So um, I've took that one up. On this node here, I'll bring this one down. Don't do it too much else they'll all start to go all haywire and drag this one up. When you start to see odd lines appearing like this, just move them back and drag this one down and then again I'm just going to click the select icon and deselect so again you can see it's starting to move ever so slightly so I'm going to come back to the select icon now so it's you know maybe not looking a lot like grass maybe at the moment but so I'm going to come along <clears throat> to I'm going to slide along the color wheel along the bottom just by moving my mouse and I'm going to choose a shade of green. I'm going to right click and say set fill. And then down here in the bottom left hand corner, I'm going to right click on where it says stroke and remove the stroke. So from here now, I'll just create a duplicate. So from here now, you can use the drag handles and start to drag it in. Now, if you use the corner as it is, you can manipulate it down and in at the same time. So if I just undo, if you hold the control key down and drag a corner handle in, it will just bring it down in proportion. So as I say, you might want to squash it down, you might want to bring it in, you know, see how it looks. You might want to get another one, make a duplicate, you might want to, you know, weld another one on top of it and drag it out or drag it up 
you know, to fill it in a bit more, select everything, go path, union and weld all that. And if you want to make sure it's welded, if you go to view, display, display and outline and look at it, you'll see that's all welded. I'll just make another duplicate of that one. So that was the original one. So again, you might want to just squash it down and squash it in a bit. That's the one that's fuller. You might not be happy with this being all uneven here. You might want to weld a box onto it. So drag a rectangle out. With this rectangle selected, I'm going to open the colour and fill icon. I'm just going to tap the opacity down so you can see. And then you might want to drag this in a bit so it sits within. Your grass shape. Drag a box round that and go path union. That will give you a flatter edge. And then again from here, you can manipulate this down how you want. It's entirely up to you. Another thing you can do, I'll select this one. You can come back to Path, Path Effects, click on Plus. And this time, instead of using Bend, choose Envelope Deformation and Add. And that will give you more options. You can leave these two boxes checked and then what you can do top bend path select that that will give you a line along the top so drag that one up then choose bottom bend path by clicking on the icon and then you could manipulate this up you can try left and right see what happens there you know, you can skew it in a bit and then just click the select icon to turn away and you can see that's bent it even more now. So that's another option. You could do that again with this. So path, path effects, click the plus button, envelope deformation, add. Um, if we untick left and right and leave enable top and bottom, that should just enable you to just move the top and bottoms. So again, if we try bottom bend and click on that, you can move this line along to get the bend. Don't do it too much else it does start to go all peculiar. Then click on the top bend and then... You can move this down or move it up and then use the select icon to select away. So you can manipulate it. It may not be perfect the way that you wanted it with the die that you'd seen for the lady that sent me the message about this. But I hope you found the video helpful. What you need to do now is come over to File save as, give it a name, I'm just going to call this grass border SVG. Come down here, make sure it's saved as a plain SVG, save it somewhere where you know where it is, I'm going to put mine on my desktop and hit save. It's saying I've got one to replace because I've already got one saved. Um, then just come to your scan and cut canvas, so with a new blank page selected, you can go to SVG, you can say choose, find your file and say OK. Now the SVG file that you've made, you should be able to put that on a USB stick and cut that directly with your machine. But if you want to open it in Canvas, then you need to open the SVG file in Canvas, then save it in Canvas, give it a project name here and then save it and then download it. So I hope you found that helpful. Please give the video a thumbs up if you did. Don't forget to subscribe if you don't already do so and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.